During the early 80s, when The Facts of Life was one of TV's most popular programs, I remember Jerry Jewell's frequent appearances as Blair Warner's cousin, also named Jerry. Those episodes were not only memorable, they were groundbreaking because Jerry, who has cerebral palsy, was the first disabled actor to have a recurring role on a TV series. And to top all of that off, the lady was very, very funny. Always a good trait to have when you're on a situation comedy. Yet with all of her talent, it is entirely possible that Jerry might not have ever graced our TV screens if not for a brief but memorable interaction with an iconic TV star during her youth. More on that in just a moment, but first let me introduce myself. Hi folks, my name is Dave Sundstrom, and I like to think of myself as something of a pop culture historian, especially when it comes to music, movies, and television. Simply put, I love talking about this stuff. So with that said, let's get rolling. Between 1980 and 1984, Jerry made frequent appearances on The Facts of Life. She may have continued appearing on the program if not for some unscrupulous actions of her then manager, who would later on be arrested for embezzlement and security fraud. But that is a story for another day. Way back then, Jerry and Lisa Welchel, the actress who played Blair on the show, developed an incredible friendship. They were so close, in fact, that the two ended up being roommates for almost a year. But if you're thinking that Lisa is the person that forever changed Jerry's life, well, you're mistaken. Instead, we need to travel further back in time. Back to when Jerry was a young girl. As you might have guessed, cerebral palsy isn't the easiest thing to have to deal with, especially when you're a little kid. Despite her best efforts to develop friendships with the other children in the neighborhood, there were times when she would be excluded. And you know what? It feels horrible to be left out. We've all been there. And when those all too frequent moments occurred, Jerry would find comfort by escaping to a world full of laughter on her television set. And one of Jerry's favorite TV programs was The Carol Burnett Show. I have to believe that it was while watching Carol that a seed of an idea started to grow in Jerry that she too could be a comedian. So she wrote Carol a letter and explained her situation and asked her what she thought about her chances of making it in the world of comedy. In that letter, she told Carol that she was amazed that people were laughing with her and not at her. She also said that she wasn't confident that she would have the courage to confront people who might dismiss her or devalue her presence because of her disability. Truthfully, Jerry didn't know if she'd ever hear back from Carol. But even if she didn't, I have to believe the exercise of putting pen to paper about her fears was beneficial. A few weeks later, Jerry did get a letter back from the comedic legend. In that letter, Carol told her that while the entertainment industry, and comedy in particular, can be tough, if she were determined and kept putting one foot in front of the other, she could get where she wanted to go. It was just the validation and the type of advice that Jerry needed. And over the course of the next decade or so, Jerry would frequently think back to that letter as she worked on achieving her dreams. And the rest, as they say, is television history. You know, Jerry's career has had its share of highs and lows. She talks about them all in a book titled I'm Walking As Straight As I Can, which currently has a five-star rating on Amazon.com. Based on the reviews, it would seem like this might be a really fascinating read. I'll post a link to it in the description section if you're interested in grabbing a copy. I'm sure that the book also talks about Jerry's work on the television series Deadwood, which aired on HBO from 2004 until 2006. The show was popular enough to have a follow-up movie that just aired a few years ago, in 2019, I believe. In that show, Jerry played a character that she helped co-create named Jewel. What a couple of amazing ladies. All right, now it's your turn. Please share your memories in the comments section. And if you like this video, I would truly appreciate a thumbs up. Maybe even share it on Facebook or Twitter. And what the heck, why not consider subscribing to my channel? I talk about music, movies, and mostly TV from the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. You know, the good stuff. But most importantly, and as always, thank you so much for watching.